so Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Ben, thank you so much. I'm so excited today to use the Roomba IA Plus with the self emptying bin. And since this is a Costco exclusive, you get extra accessories with this giant box. But we got something very, very special. Hold on one second. Whoa! What? What's going on here? This is crazy! Alright, let's do a challenge of the Roomba IA Plus. Hey Roblox, do you want to help me? Yeah, I got a cleanup challenge for you. Check it out. I made a little mess in my kitchen. Do you mind picking it up? Okay, so well, it confirms it. Roombas make a great plow. Okay, just kidding. Alright, so you notice that little blue indicator on the top of the robot? That means that the dustbin's full, so it's going to go ahead and go back to the docking station and empty itself. And once it's done emptying, it will return back to where it started. This what sets the Roombas apart from the competition. I have tried other self-emptying bin robot vacuums on this channel, like the Neboss, the Prisenic M7 Pro, the Evil Vax TS, the Shark IQ. And none of these robot vacuums have the ability to know when the dustbin's full and return back to the docking station to self-empty. Okay, let's check out the self-emptying bin in action. Just a fair warning, it's quite loud, so I do recommend turning down the volume. Okay, so it looks like we're off to a great start. So it looks like the Roomba just filled up its dustbin again. All right, going back the third time around. Uh, one thing to remember is it shuts off the extractor bar. So that's gonna push this stuff away. But it's just a key where it's right here. But let's check out the bag here. Yeah, my bucket. Yeah, it's about maybe a fourth full. You guys see that? Okay, so you notice that uh, Ben tries three times to try to empty itself, so that's a cool little feature. 
So another thing that sets the Roombas apart from the competition is not only can it detect when a dustbin's full, also can detect how much dirt is on the ground. So you notice that short back and forth cleaning part? Yes, it's actually concentrating on those areas that are super dirty. Well, this entire floor is dirty, so you probably see that dirt detection sensor go off a lot. Well, I guess keeping track how many times it's gone out. I believe it's gone back to docking station five times. Not 100% sure, so... I think... For my way, to go up to 86 times back to docking station. Well, we got more accumulation of debris, so I'm just gonna push it away. That's probably the only downside right now. Yep. Definitely gets filled up quickly. Alright, so it looks like the little Roomba i8 Plus is doing good, just keeps chugging along. And once this dustbin fills up fairly quickly, it just goes back to the docking station and just continues on cleaning. You may notice me kind of running back and forth in the frame. Well, unfortunately, my secondary camera only has one hour of recording time, so I had to kind of pause and stop it. Well, how are you liking this pickup challenge so far? If you're liking this extreme challenge, give me a great big thumbs up. It really does help out this video. Okay, so it looks like we have the first error. Um, let me check it out. You got the red indicator down here too. Let's check out the bag. Looks like the bag's about mm, halfway full, so not too bad. Let's try to empty that real quick. So the bag's emptied out. Let's check the robot itself. So what's going on. So my suspicion is just the accumulation of the debris up here is what's causing it to lose its uh, suction. Empty the bin. Yep. Looks like there's still a lot of dirt and debris in there. Now we're just going to empty out the robot. Okay, so one thing that's kind of shocking is this entire filming took about 5 hours. Yes, I started at 10 a.m. and didn't finish until 3 p.m. The reason behind this is every time the robot has to go back to the docking station, it takes a few minutes for it to uh, empty out its dustbin. And you notice how quickly the dustbin fills up? Okay, so one comment I get asked a lot is what's the difference between the i8 and the i7? Well, the i8 is basically a Costco exclusive, comes with a self-emptying bin, also comes with additional accessories that you don't get with the i7. And lastly, the i8 does have 20% battery battery life. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between the Plus model and the non-Plus model, well, that just means that the self-emptying bins included in the package. You can always just buy the non-Plus model and get the self-emptying bin later. I believe it's $349 for just a self-emptying bin. Okay, so we're at the 34 minute mark and we'll just keep on going here and we'll see how long this raw vacuum lasts and we'll see if it runs out of battery or if it's able to finish the challenge. Okay, so let's talk about the clean pan. So the Roomba starts out with a back and forth clean pan, then it will fill in that clean pan with a permanent sweep and if you have it do two runs, it will do a crisscross pattern. Well, what's impressive is if there's a lot of dirt around the bin, it still is able to get on top of it. 
Um, one thing I had problems with the T8 was it wasn't able to get on a spin if there's just a slight amount of good degrees. So this is quite impressive that the I8 was able to dock itself despite having all this debris around. Look at that. It's crazy. I'm going to push it over here. Down inside there. Alright, so keep in mind this is a stress test. This doesn't represent the real world. Um, I do try to see how well these robot vacuums are well made. So I had a similar issue with my Roblox where dirt and debris actually got inside the vacuum motor. Uh, it's very unlikely. When I had the Roblox, the S5, I actually didn't do any of these stress tests, but I know this is the same case but with the vacuum motor. So let me show you here. Can you guys see the vacuum motor right here? Um, luckily I'm able to access it. I can't remove this little panel. So I got my screwdriver. I'm going to see if I can just kind of spin this around to dislodge any debris. It's spinning freely now. Um, we'll go ahead and put everything back together and see if it's going to work. Well, thankfully the vacuum fan motor was easily accessible. I don't know if Roomba did that by design or if it was just something that they just happened to make accessible. Anyways, when I had the Roblox S5, I actually had to take the entire robot part to get to the fan and pellet unit. So that's just something to consider. The Roombas are very user friendly and a lot of the parts are interchangeable. If something breaks, you can just remove it with a few screws and swap it out with a new part. I robot likes to stick with the try to design the round hockey puck shaped robot. Now except for the S9, all the robot vacuums share the similar traits and most of the dust bins, the extractor bars, and even the side brushes are interchangeable. Okay, can you tell what Roomba I have here? Yeah, I can't tell either. Alright, so they all have front wheel casters, they got charging contacts, they got cliff sensors, they also have the super fast spinning side brush, and some of them do have optical sensors, and they got adjustable wheels, and you may notice the signature extractor bar, yeah, they have the dual extractor bar design, which is really good picking all different types of debris, and in the bottom right corner is the older model, the Roomba 960, which has the older grey and white style extractor bar. Okay, so let's take a look at the extractor bars. They're very durable. They're just a silicon rubber and they last a long time. I usually get about three to six months of heavy usage out of it. Now, notice the older design with the yellow ends versus the newer design. I prefer the newer design because it has the bright green color, which is my favorite color. But anyways, let's go ahead and keep going here. You notice that the dustbins are the exact same, except for like the, the i3 plus and the Roomba i8 plus, which is shown here, have the extractor port. So you may notice that little gold disc there, that's the acoustic sensor, and you notice that the i3 doesn't have it, so unfortunately you can't concentrate on heavy dirt areas and do a short back and forth cleaning pattern. And yes, the self-emptying bins do fit in the older models, but they don't work with the self-emptying bin. Okay, so we're about halfway through, uh, let's go ahead and check out the app integration of the i8+. Plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the iRobot app, uh, what do you guys think about the icon? It looks pretty cool. Once we jump into it, you'll be greeted with a nice little animation and it has the R for iRobot. Cool. So right now I have the i8 Plus loaded up, but you can see up top there is my list of robots. So I can scroll to the right or left to select a different robot. Let's go ahead and jump back to the i8 Plus here. And down below, it tells me some stats of the robot. We have a map since the i8 Plus does have smart mapping using the iAdapt. 3.0 also tells me we're at 100% and we're at vacuums ready to vacuum and since I have the self emptying bin I can empty out the bin just from tapping there. Now if you scroll down you can vacuum everywhere as a quick little shortcut but you can always add your favorite thing like maybe you want your favorite room or something. Very nice feature let's check that out. You can see I can just say all right I want to have a shortcut to my hallway and then you can change the colors. Cool little feature. Now let's go ahead and scroll down here. You got the history, so we can check out the history port of the i8 Plus. And we'll check out my map. And there we go, this was my clean challenge. And you can see that it was basically got everywhere it could. All right, let's keep on scrolling down here. Now we got a scheduling app. Very nice feature about the scheduling is if you have the smart mapping, you can tell it to go to a certain room on certain days, very nice. Now, one thing is the i8 only has one power section, so you can't change that. But you do have the uh, imprint link, so you can tell the BravaJet M6 to mop after the robot's done. That was something that the previous software didn't allow. Alright, let's go and cancel. 
and go back here. Let's we'll scroll down. Now we have messages, so if you have any errors, it will pop up there. Let's check out robot settings real quick. We got the about information. Uh, we can locate our robot if we lose it. Now, one thing we can do is change the behavior. We can do two passes. We can do automatic, great for small rooms, or one pass. Also, we have the bin behavior. This is exclusive to the Roombas where they can go back and empty themselves if the bin's full, very nice. Or you can just tell the robot to keep cleaning despite the bin being full. All right, let's go and uh, scroll back here. Now that's basically it. So let's go ahead and check out the mapping here. And this is the main floor. So you notice the two blue areas. This is my uh, concentrated uh, clean areas. This is something new for this app update. Uh, when I first started, I could only do rooms. Now I can do area selects, so it's very nice. Let's check out the zones here. And it just gives you some information about the different types of zones. You got clean zones, and you got keep out zones. All right, let's add a zone. So this is my clean zone. And we can also add a, uh, let's just call it the clean zone bed. But we could also add a keep out zone as well. So we'll do that real quick. Do a, add a keep out zone, and we'll save it. You also have the ability to use the lighthouse as well. So they're basically little battery powered units that can do a halo mode or a straight line if you just want to black out an entryway. Okay, let's uh, do room divide. You can also divide your rooms. Uh, you can delete the line. You can rotate the line as well. Very nice. You also have room labels. So again, you can label the rooms. You can do a customer's label or you can do a uh, preset label. And that's basically it for the Roomba i8 Plus. I'll briefly showcase the differences between these models. Alright, so the E5 is the cheapest of the Wi Fi enabled for a vacuum. It does not have a self empty bin option and you cannot get it, but the design is very similar. They will have butt physical bump sensors for all the models. You also have the Archon sensors and most of them have a core cool handle. Yes, take it to your friend's place, take it to your grandma's place, your mother's place, your papa's place. Anywhere you want to go, take these Roombas with you. Yes, they like to uh, be with you at all times. Alright, so one downside to the i Plus is there's no killing handle. How do I carry this thing? Hmm. Yeah, I can't grab it. Yeah, sad day. Alright, so all these Roombas do have the home button, you got the clean button, and you got the spot clean button right up here. So you got that signature design, and you also have the little R for iRobot. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's talk about the navigation differences. You got the iDAP 1.0, you got the iDAP 2.0, and I have no clue what this is. They don't even mention the iDAP, they just say it's slow navigation. And we got the iDAP 3.0. Alright, so let's go ahead and swap these guys over. Yeah, you like my sound effects? Yeah, it's really cheesy. Okay, so this is probably iDAP 1.5 because you use gyros or accelerometers, and it's not as good as the 960 because it does have a counter based system, which allows it to relocate itself if you physically move the robot. So that's just one thing that these guys can't do. But this guy does have the spot mapping, so it does know where you're at as it goes around the floor plan. So that's just one thing to consider. But with the i3 Plus, you don't get the actual room select or area select, and you can't do keep out zones, like on the i8 Plus. So the, the upper models, like the i7 Plus, i8 Plus, and S9, you get that spot mapping with the room select and keep out zones. Now, all these guys do have the Bravo Jet M6 compatibility, which is implant link. So you can hook up these robots and tell your little Bravo Jet to mop after these guys are done. So very, very nice. But everything else is the same. All the cleaning mechanics is the exact same. They have the dual brush rolls. And I have these guys flipped over. Wow, these guys are like flippy. All right, you see that? Very, very same. Uh, one downside or one difference is this is great brush rolls. I believe this is all the design, but for the most part, it's the same, and everything else is almost the same. Um, one thing you do notice is the self-emptying port on the i3 Plus and on the i8 Plus. Okay, so we're nearing the end here, so if you have any questions about the Roombas, feel free to shoot a comment down below, I'll be glad to answer them. Yeah, there's so many models out there, it's kind of hard to determine what's best for you, but just to keep in mind that most of the clean mechanics on the Roomba series are very similar, so you won't get a significant increase in suction unless you go with the Roomba S9. Okay, the big question is, should you get a Roomba?
So here's some things you can send when picking a Roomba. The one big thing is you always can spend more on a Roomba than competing products out there. Also, I found out the accessories are easy to get. Uh, you can find them in big box stores or you can go online. I found out the app integration is very easy to use. It's very user friendly. Also, the robot itself is user friendly. You can clean out the extractor bars fairly easy. Remove the pet hair. Also, clean out the dustbins very easy. And I found out the products themselves last a long time, like the extractor bars, the side brushes. This is something I found on competing products where the consumables don't last very long. Okay, so let's talk about some of the downsides of the Roombas. I think the biggest downside is the price. For the features and performance, you can find robot vacuums half the price that can perform just as well as the Roombas. Okay, let's put the self emptying bin aside and talk about the robot itself. So some of the glaring features that you can find on most robot vacuums are different power levels. Also, some of the robot vacuums do have live mapping. This can be found on gyro based, camera based, and even lighter based systems. Given its price tag, another feature that the Roombas are missing is an advanced sensor, either a sonar or a camera based sensor that's mounted on the front of the robot. So these sensors can help it detect objects better than like an infrared sensor that's found on these Roomba products. Well, what do you guys think? I think the Roomba IA Plus did really well. We have two buckets full of uh, Rice Krispies, and it looks like the IA Plus is going back to empty itself one more time, and we'll just see how much dirt and debris is left in the dustbin. Okay, I just want to mention that this is a stress test. This doesn't represent the real world. Um, I just wanted to showcase how well the Roomba i8 Plus can do and how capable the machine can be. And yes, there's a lot of dirt and debris still left on the floor, but you can always rerun the i8 Plus if you wanted to do a second run. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, my name is Nathan, this is Royal Masters. I do a lot of head-to-head -head challenges with Royal Vacuums, I do unboxings, reviews, also I work with a lot of great companies to showcase their products, and I try to find some flaws, and if I do find some flaws, I kind of showcase them, so you guys know as a consumer what to look out for. So it looks like the Ruby IA Plus did really well in the Alice dustbin, and we'll see how much dirt debris in the last bag here. I think I had to empty out this disposable bag probably like 5 or 6 times. So in conclusion, the Roombas do have the best self-emptying bin out there, whether you get the S9+, Plus, the i7+, Plus, or the i8+, Plus, or even the i3+. Plus. Now, if you have a lot of dirt and debris, I highly recommend getting the Roombas, because these are the most capable machines. And if you have a lot of pet hair, I found out the dual extractor bars are very easy to clean off. I did find like combo style brushes, you do have to get a cleaning tool, but with the silicone brushes on the Roombas, they're really easy to clean. Alright, you guys have a great rest of your day, I hope you guys are safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time.